I'm blind and this is how I used a dating app to find my husband. This is part two of our two part on dating apps and accessibility. If you missed part one, click up here and this is part two. <laughs> that was fun. Well, I think it made me just really kind of grateful that I'm not using dating apps anymore. Yeah, I gotta admit, me too. Uh, I do not miss it. No, do not. Not at all. But. There is something important when talking about dating apps and having right because we discovered each other and yeah. then we started chatting. We started chatting and I lots had lots of chats. Yeah, actually, we were pretty verbose. They were very surface level at the beginning. Yeah, lots of just getting to know each other and you I like the fact that I use proper uh, grammar. Yes. Um, punctuation, full sentences, and uh, standard capitalization. I have, I have something to admit to you. I think I've told you this before because I'd never heard your voice. And I am, am. Sorry, <laughs> that was a cross between ah and eh. <laughs> I, I actually wondered if maybe you were European oh, and you, okay. the, and English wasn't your first language, because like it was so rare in my experience. People who spoke or wrote, I should say, as perfectly as you did, were more like students of English that were yeah, like- Yeah, like English was my second language. Yeah, because I actually went to- uh, What was my first language? I, I, I assumed maybe like, I don't know, Czechoslovakian. <laughs> Yeah. You gave off I a do strong. Have there. You I did. do have roots You gave there. off a strong European vibe, and I knew you played the violin, so I was like, "Oh, okay, he's like, he's Eastern European or something." Okay, but there was a moment, yeah, where you revealed something to me. Yeah, I had to come out as blind. I had to choose a moment when I felt like I trusted you, and with that information, Were there you moments? had already, Matthew. You already knew, but I didn't I know did. you knew. You didn't know it. Yes, I did not know. You never even let on that you had already stalked my Instagram profile. Uh, I guess maybe you were waiting for me to like reveal this to you in my own time. I actually wasn't thinking about it. I was like, he must know. I looked at his Instagram, so why would I assume he put that? it there? So this is new. It was I'm buried. learning now that you didn't know. I did not that know. I knew. I did not know. Well, that must have been hard. You must have been like second guessing yourself. Is now a good time? Should I wait? No, I. No? You know, well, okay, maybe a little bit. I I was like, okay, here we go. It was after yeah. one. Buckle we, up, Buttercup. I, we'd been chatting for a couple of days. Yes. And you know, we probably were both chatting to multiple people. But I really liked it when you came on and were talking to me, and I was like, this is. I like this guy, he's so interesting, and it, it felt like an intelligent conversation, super important to me. So I was like, okay, I think now is the time. I felt like maybe we were gonna make arrangements to meet one day. So I was like, I wanna tell this guy that I have a disease called retinitis pigmentosa, that I'm in the process of losing my vision, that I'm a white cane user, all of this mm -hmm. stuff. I was like, okay, now's the time because I don't want this, I don't want anything to progress without that knowledge out there. Yeah. Now we, there was, a, there was that initial spark and connection just digitally. That has gotta be hard because you're thinking like, this might end this conversation. And it had. I'd been many times or it might continue I, I'll tell you something the and number like, of times me, Matthew, yeah the number of times I had divulged that information and the person was like oh cool and we maybe finished out a conversation and I never heard from them again they never just vanished nobody ever did that completely okay. but then many a time I so, must have been blocked. So you that. never like divulged that information and were like immediately ghosted never until like, you what <laughs> I told you that I had retinitis pigmentosa. I wrote up a whole paragraph. Yeah, I sent yes, it to you, you at 8 p.m. at night yep. after a wonderful and beautiful conversation that we'd been having about puzzles. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and, and then ghosted. I Nothing. read it. Guys, crickets. I left him on read. I read it. That so was it. A couple hours went by and I went to bed. And just before bed, I looked one more time, no response. I said, you know, that's okay. I realize that was probably a bit too much for you uh, to handle. I get it. You know, take care. No hard feelings. It was nice chatting. With you. Yeah. That's what I said. I wrote these words to you. I went to sleep believing I would never hear from this man again. Then what happened? That's it. That's the end of the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We never met again. So I read the message as my friend arrived at the door. She and I were going to go out and get <gasps> dinner. Wait, I was always under the impression you didn't see the message till later. So you did see it and then you went out for dinner. So you must have been thinking about it while you were out for dinner. Oh yeah. I mean, I remember like, oh no, 
I have to leave right now. And this, this is going to take, Yeah. I can't just say, that's cool, I'll chat <laughs> later. That's a good point. I was like, that's okay, a really good point. I can either send something extremely short or I can just take the time and respond in full, thoughtful, Later, so I chose that. Wow. I was like, did you ever at any point think, oh my God, it's been like three hours since he sent that message. He probably, he's probably waiting for a response. Matthew doesn't think that way. Let me tell you no. right now that Matthew does not think that way. I think that way. I'm always thinking about what the other person is feeling or, oh, don't leave them. Okay, okay. so it's a dating <laughs> app. People <laughs> randomly come on and randomly go off all the time. All the Someone time. is like suddenly messaging you and then suddenly they're not messaging okay, okay. you. Okay. So I just felt like, that's normal. You're on and then you're suddenly off and you never explain why. People just pick it, pick up apps and use them whenever they can. So did that app have read receipts? I don't know. I don't recall. Maybe it, it didn't. I don't know that it Okay, did. so maybe you didn't even know that I re read it. But we were in the middle of the conversation. But I had I share that thing and then it, the conversation ended. So of course I was like, okay, well, yeah. that's not a coincidence, but it was. So did I message back later that night? I, the next might day? Have, it might have been that night, but it was you late. You were in bed. And I didn't receive the message until okay. I woke up the next morning. So I got back from yes. having dinner right. with my friend. Yes. By the way, did you talk to the friend about it? No. Or you didn't mention it to me? I don't think so. Okay. You were too new. So I got back and I was like, need to respond to this. Did a little research, did a little Googling about retinitis pigmentosa, wrote up a very thoughtful reply, yeah. sent it, went to sleep. I wake up the next morning, open the app, did not expect to see a message from this guy, but I did. And it was so thoughtful. I have to tell you, like, I... I'm just reliving the memory right now. I'm getting a little, like, I just got chills. Because I remember thinking how cute you were and how sweet you were and how smart you were and how talented you were and how sad I was to go to bed. Thinking like, okay, this guy can't handle this. And then waking up to the most thoughtful reply, including that you had like clearly researched it. Like you didn't say that you did, but based on your response, I could tell he, this guy had just Googled and done some <laughs> research on it. And I was just like, my heart was so happy. I was like, oh my God. Okay, we can continue yeah. down this, this path that we've started together. And it, that was a really exciting moment for me. That was, that was, you know, I'm laughing because I did like research and was thought that I was like, I was at least communicating with you some with some knowledge. Yes. Now I'm looking back and thinking like, oh, I knew so little. There's oh, yeah. so much that I've learned since. But the fact that you looked into it at all, that was just like, wow. I have to tell you, I can count on one hand the number of people that I've dated in my life that have bothered to do that. And I mean like at any point in the relationship. I've been in relationships with people for several months who never bothered to Google or research the disease. But you did it and we hadn't even met yet. But that's so what that's happened right. next is basically we decided to meet up. No, it isn't. I deleted the app. Oh, that's right. You ghosted <laughs> me. You disappeared. You guys, you came back. I can't believe it. I deleted it. So we, oh my God. Plot twist. We continued to talk, but because we lived in different countries, I really never saw this being a feasible relationship because I can't drive. I didn't expect to date a guy who had to cross the border and come back and forth. And I- Yeah, even for me, that felt so complicated. And then some very personal things started to happen in my life, family related, roommate related, stuff going on in my life that I was like, there is too much going on in my life right now to worry about a dating app and to even entertain the idea of dating this amazing person who lives in another country. I so was you like- just deleted it. I had to. Did not explain what was going on. <laughs> I did not. I didn't say I'm gonna oh, disappear for a while. Oh, it's oh. been great talking to you. I think, you know what Adios. it was, Matthew? I was scared to get emotionally involved in somebody who lived in another country you still and be. I had so much going on that I just needed to focus on my life and get a couple ducks in a row okay and I was like I am sorry but you didn't say I'm sorry no you just disappeared I just disappeared that's the ultimate ghosting it really is you know, I'm sorry. but you downloaded it again I about did. a month later about a month later end of April I deleted it and I downloaded it again June 5th Okay, June we 5th. started talking again. Immediately, oh, Matthew yeah. texted me. Not and this time me. I Sorry. said, you messaged me. We were not exchanging numbers. You messaged me. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, he found me again. How did you find me? I had like marked you, saved you, starred you, hearted you. I guess I had just. I didn't delete my profile. You I didn't delete your profile, I deleted the app. But you did disappear, which is interesting. Yeah. But when you popped back up. I was still saved in your I was favorites. like, it is time to meet up. Oh yeah. You seized it. And things were such in my life 
life. I was so scared to meet you in real life because you were just like, you seem too perfect. And I was like queasy, sick, but I was like, I had resolved all the stuff going on with my family. Everything was like good. And I was like, I need to meet this man. Seize the day, carpe diem. Okay, so that was everything that led up to our first date. Okay, so we agreed to meet. Yeah. And that's a whole other story. And we have covered that in another video. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about that today, but I feel like, I hope at least, we've communicated our experience with using dating apps, especially for me as a blind person. And I mean, how I, was I learned something today just with voiceover. Yeah. Watching you use that. I'm thinking, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, that would be useful. You know, up to a point. Up to a point. But still challenging, still frustrating. So challenging. I realized that it has a long way to go before the technology is um, accessible to all people. You need a second phone where you like hold it over your own phone yeah. and then like AI like describes well, the person. There just needs to be an AI built in, built into your phone that could just describe everything to you like you're like your best friend. Yeah. Okay, Matthew, I have a story to share with you. One more story. And I want you to share a story with me too. Okay, about we, what? We both, before meeting each other, yes. dated yes. through a dating app, went on a date with other disabled people. Yes, we both I did. was not the first disabled person no. that you went out on a date you with. You were dos. Dos. You yeah. had a little practice. And a few months before I met you, I also dated a person with a disability. They were not blind, they had a different disability. So on today's extended episode, we are gonna share these stories about dating disabled people. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna describe my dual disabled date and you're gonna describe your, your first experience yeah. with another uh, disabled person. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. If you want to hear about both of our previous dates before we dated each other involving disabilities, what that was like, you can watch the extended episodes at patreon.com forward slash Matthew and Paul. Or, or if you're on YouTube, you can tap right here. You don't even have to leave the app. But we want to hear yes. your dating stories, your dating app stories to be specific. If you have funny, sad, hilarious, true, heartwarming. <laughs> Do you? Did you say sad? I, I want to, them all. I don't want, I want to hear just the funny and heartwarming <laughs> no, ones, okay? Sad, the disasters. <laughs> the dating disasters. <laughs>